Guys, if there's one thing we can count on from the Russian government and their state-backed media, it's that they really don't want America to be able to function. And leaked video from Russian state TV shows just exactly how bad Russia's hoping for America to have a rough time of things. This is coming to us from Russian Media Monitor. This is a, a site that monitors Russian media, gives us English language translations. Let's get into it. Of course, I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. You guys know this. Look how they refer to him as old man Trump. So here's already, I think there's some interesting stuff here that, so there is this World War Three is coming narrative that a lot, a lot of media are starting to push here in the United States. World War Three is coming. And I just want to point out to everyone that the Russian military is currently in a dead heat with the Ukrainian military in a small regional conflict. So the belief that this will escalate suddenly into a conflagration of a world war is, is a little preposterous. Um, but Russia, again, needs to believe that because it needs its enemies to be convinced of its power, right? Because what Russia doesn't want is the truth to come out, which is that their military has been ground down and is exhausted. From this fighting. I, okay, wait. They're actually citing putting Trump on Russian uh, state TV. He says we're very. They're translating Trump into English, but he says we're, we're very close to World War Three. We've never been closer to it than we are now, guys. The, the, if you've never heard of the Cuban Missile Crisis, maybe this seems true. This isn't. This is the dumbest. The, the, this is just not historically accurate. There's only one candidate in this race who's going to be up to the task Wait. of saving America from every single Biden disaster. I know the players on the other side, they've always respected our country. Like they've never respected us. Trump, what he said. We don't have any friend. Interesting. Well, here's what I find fascinating. He says, we shouldn't have any illusions. He's no friend to us. We have no friends in America. Which itself is kind of interesting to me. An interesting admission, again, from Russian state TV. America. We don't need to hold ourselves with illusions. I can't relate to the blessing of the presentation. <laughs> Donald Fredovich Trump, right? I think that means son of Fred. Trump, Okay, they are absolutely roasting these guys, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, credit where credit's due. These are a good burn, right? I want to point out, uh, it's better to have a man who forgets it, it's better to have a man who forgets his own decisions than a man who does not understand his own decisions. That's sort of where I'm at. I didn't know what he decided. He lies about himself and tells the truth about Biden. All right, I, this guy's winning me over, all right? His, his absolute cynicism. Here's the thing. You got to remember that when it comes to other countries... Um, sometimes it's very easy to look outside and see the glaring flaws that you can't see inside the country. This isn't my way of saying like, I like Russia or that I think he's like right about everything, but you know, a sick burn is a sick burn, right? Uh, Talk about the holidays. All right, this is weird, guys. I, I'm sorry. Uh, the most of the country, it's certainly a good thing. The atmosphere. Okay, this is a country. Oh, interesting. Okay, I see where he's getting at. He goes, "All right, well, the holidays were a great time, and this atmosphere clearly demonstrates." Uh, 
that we the country is clearly not on the verge of defeat. Guys, I don't know what to how to tell you this, but in times of war, in times of tremendous suffering throughout history, uh, human beings have still celebrated their holidays. I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure that Germans at the brink of defeat in the Second World War still tried to celebrate their holidays uh, as best they could. Um, and it, but it, he's also like objectively correct, right? Russia is not on the verge of being thrown out of Ukraine. Are they winning? No. No, no. But are they on the verge of catastrophic loss? Not militarily. It's on the verge of catastrophic loss, as they say on the West. That's true. It's a good signal. On the other hand... You got to love a commentator who basically his best strategy is to talk about something else, right? Wow, interesting. The country's not on the verge of victory either. Huh. This is unusual, an unusual level of transparency for Russian state media. At least it's clear to me. My third impression about the atmosphere is that the country is in a state of un internal uncertainty. Sort of hoping everything will somehow blow over. Oh, he's talking about the United States. All right, weird. Uh, okay, well, I guess that's sort of also true. He goes, maybe a civil war will start in the United States. This is probably wishful thinking, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I understand that um, in 2016, you could get a lot of clicks on an article if you tried to spin this like country in civil war. But this is just uh, what, what happens when authoritarian countries look at democratic countries. They go, man, these democratic countries are just in a constant state of like acrimony. And they say, this must be the, the precursor to a civil war, because in Russia, if you had an entire other political party just criticizing and openly roasting uh, uh, someone like Putin and his party, it, it would be a sign that civil war was imminent because it would indicate a weakness in the Kremlin and the state apparatus. But because democracies, high levels of conflict are a feature, not a bug, um, it's the sign, it can be the sign of a healthy democracy. Now, obviously, right, for a while, for a couple of years there, we had people like going out in the streets with sticks and like beating on each other. Um, you know, that's not healthy democracy. But going to the polls, voting for who you want, talking to, going to your school board meetings and, and state representatives and writing letters, um, those are things that are the sign of a healthy democracy. It's just authoritarian regimes don't recognize it. They look at it as a, like a farce. Um, and as you guys know, right, if you uh, want to see some of the uncensored combat footage from these conflicts, right, I twice a week do the deep dive analysis um, and that stuff drops on combatfitnews.com. If you're interested, you can become a member. It's the best way to support the channel. Get the viral combat footage that drops um, and then a deep dive analysis on it. Uh, we looked last week at, um, or sorry, yesterday, um, we looked at the IDF clearing uh, buildings with a drone, which is pretty wild. And then we also looked at uh, some uh, a, a militant in the Syrian civil war, his GoPro, uh, showing him in a close range firefight, which is absolutely wild. And then, of course, some of the Russian uh, forces trying to and failing to take Kupiansk. So if you're interested, again, combatvetnews.com. Okay, let's get back to this guy, this weirdo. Sure. То ли Шольц умрет, то ли он уйдет, то ли еще что-то происходит. Всю эту ситуацию, то ли Зеленский исчезнет, вообще вознесется на небеса или еще что-то случится. Okay, I just love, this is the most Soviet talk show panel I've ever seen. Not a one of these guys appears to give a shit. Some of them appear to be actively, like, checked out. It is really bizarre. Uh, that these are the hosts, right? Just these old men just talking. It's so strange. At least American political shows, they give you some spice. They punch it up. Here, here, look at look at the last dude. Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin himself, right there. Just thought you should, you should see that. Duh, more like they'll descend into hell. Yeah. Gotta, you know... Okay, uh, let's see. There you go. <laughs> okay, I asked the same thing. Exactly what are you talking about? Yeah, I asked the same thing, buddy. 
конфликт действительно долгий, так сказать, нам не выгоден. На мой взгляд, uh, uh, here's someone who says, I disagree that Trump is not beneficial for us. На мой взгляд, opinion, когда Трамп говорил, что при мне Соединенные Штаты уважали. When Trump said under him the U.S. was respected, I very much doubt that. Okay. Tried to demonstrate it once, launching 56 missiles against Syria. That was the only thing he ever did. Why would they be respected? He killed Soleimani. Even Netanyahu didn't dare do that. He'll make a decision that'll blow up everything. Wait, if Trump comes to power, there will most likely be a civil war. All right, this is a this is a real. Listen, no, it's going to be the same thing there was last time. Last time, bunch of crazies will go on the streets. They'll fight each other for two days, and then the country will move on, because. We have systems not, uh, you know, because we have checks and balances, right? Just like Trump didn't destroy the country last time. He did some things that, you know, maybe you don't agree with, maybe you did. Um, but he was kept in check by, again, the checks and balances system of the United States. <laughs> I keep hearing this will happen any day now. I'm all for it. These guys read, uh, these guys consume too much, uh, too much media. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, the country probably not on the verge of civil war. That's, that's all I can tell you. I'm all for it. In four years, Trump destroyed more than all presidents. More Bush Jr. and Obama. Oh, my God. That's interesting. I I mean, I kind of agree with that. But, but yeah, this is one of those things where, you know, this is a proxy, these guys, for sort of like their Kremlin mouthpieces. So you, they can be inferred as trying to, uh, you can sort of tease out the Kremlin's official stance, which is actually that they are not sure if Trump or Biden are good or bad. Okay, uh, this is that is Russia's speculation on an American civil war. All right, that is a pretty that is a pretty smooth brain take, guys. I'm not gonna lie, but it was still an interesting look at sort of what the Russians are hoping for in the U.S. elections. Uh, anyway, guys, that's all I had. Of course, thank you to our Colonel Tier members. Thank you to our Lieutenant Tier members at CombatVetNews.com and all the members at CombatVetNews.com. I couldn't do this without you guys. See you in the next one. Cheers.